Olá, esse é o Linha de Frente e hoje nós temos um convidado internacional, uma das maiores autoridades em sustentabilidade na indústria no mundo, o doutor Florian Congoli, que nos deu a honra de conversar conosco diretamente de Montreal. Então, essa entrevista vai ser feita em inglês, ela está sendo gravada e vai ser exibida a partir do dia 24 e para que as legendas sejam inseridas. Então, a partir de agora, eu vou falar em inglês e as legendas serão inseridas em português. Well, I'd like to meet Dr. Florian. Thank you very much for being with us, Dr. Florian. It's a great pleasure. As I said in Portuguese a few moments ago, you are one of the greatest authorities, most recognized authorities in sustainability in industrial processing in the world. And also, you are uh, the curator and the organizer of the greatest show on earth about sustainability. It happens every year and in 2018, we had the pleasure of having you here and with seven Nobel Prizes in Rio de Janeiro. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, thank you also, Mario, the pleasure is mine. Well, Dr. Florian, let's start a little bit from the beginning. Uh, in the 90s, you started uh, Flogen Technologies I started up yes. even before people use this term, startups. And I would like you to talk a little bit about this moment in your life, this period in your life. Uh, well, um, the idea came uh, by finding out the, the normal, uh, many possibilities that exist in the industry. In terms of the time, by the way, the name, the name sustainability was not a familiar name as today. In 1992, it was a conference in Rio de Janeiro that determined mm -hmm. the first, uh, the first uh, definition of the word. But uh, independently of this, without even hearing the name sustainability, I found out the huge opportunities to improve the industrial processes in terms mm -hmm. of reducing the energy, Uh, decreasing cost, in, increasing at the same time the quality of the products and um, uh, reducing the waste. Mm -hmm. By chance, this is also sustainability. Uh, and this happened uh, uh, by uh, visiting so many and working for so, so many big industries. So in, uh, in 1997 and 1998, Uh, I was invited in Western Mining Corporation in Australia. Uh, we passed working for them uh, for about one year, improving their processes. And then, then uh, we had uh, two projects uh, separately uh, with Mitsubishi and Sumitomo in Japan. Mm -hmm. So basically all this, uh, this uh, experience directly to the industry in two different continents mm -hmm. uh, told me and uh, taught me the huge opportunity that exists in the industry to improve those processes, which if we use the terms today, mm -hmm. is to make them sustainable processes. Yeah, so two the things sustainability about in our company came mm -hmm. so natural, even with now knowing the term of sustainability. Mm -hmm. okay. So two this is how the idea came up. And we found out that it's a huge opportunity to create this startup that deals with this, not only making the existing industry sustainable, mm -hmm. using the term of today, yes. but at the same time, at the same time, uh, uh, developing new technologies that achieve the same goals, oh, which okay. with the same terms today are new sustainable technologies. Okay, you talked about Sumitomo and Mitsubishi, and it was during this uh, period in Japan, right? That yes, you exactly. get, you had your PhD at the well, Tohoku University. Uh, that's a, yes, uh, that's a that's a, a interesting story. Uh -huh. uh, we had projects with Mitsubishi and Sumitomo, uh -huh. and uh, those projects were very successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was advised that uh, this work done for Mitsubishi and Sumitomo uh, mm -hmm. to be put in a PhD uh, mm -hmm. form because it was enough. Actually, they told me there are two or three di different PhD in that work, mm -hmm. but we concentrated only the main non-confidential information and we put it together as a PhD and as a PhD thesis. And this was, uh, uh, this was the story of my PhD was uh, 
approved by a committee in uh, Tohoku University where uh, the industry had cooperation with and I knew uh, a great professor like Professor Azawa uh, and, um, and uh, others. Uh, so uh, this, this is the story. This is the story. I see. Let me ask you a question. Uh, two years ago, we were together in the American uh, Chemical Society exhibition in Orlando. And I had the opportunity of seeing you talking to many scientists. Yes. And all of them, they would uh, make comments like you're the guy to be observed about sustainability, to be heard about sustainability. And uh, I've realized that this admiration that the academy has uh, for you has to do that you've never, you never stopped being a scientist, right? You're proud exactly. of being a scientist exactly. even nowadays. So yes. um, what's your lab routine? How many days a year do you spend in a lab? Well, essentially every day. I see. Essentially every day. Uh, and also... Uh, we have uh, we visit frequently many different mm -hmm. industrial companies which is part of my routine also uh you know it is um, it is a challenging questions that uh, uh, how much you have to uh, work yourself and how much you have to delegate mm -hmm. but in science delegating in science is not so evident mm -hmm. so if you are not fully there fully fully uh dealing with science Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to delegate. So, in that terms, uh, it's my my also it's my pleasure to deal all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm curious myself uh, to 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 have uh, my hands on the different projects. So, participating actively, actively, and also managing other people dealing in in different mm -hmm. projects. Part of that, it's my my uh, hobby and my necessity to go to industrial companies and speak with them. Uh, it is uh, one of the pleasures of my uh, scientific activity, applied scientific activity, because it's basic and applied. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, as a, as, a, as a company, we are in the middle. We apply the scientific knowledge to the industry. Mm -hmm. So our goal is application, because also sustainability is, uh, deals with application. Mm -hmm. But you have to start with basics and apply those basic science. So one of the uh, most interesting part of my scientific and the scientific uh, life is uh, I enjoy very much being with industry. That's why at the time I, I am at the industry, it's one of my, of my highlights besides being in the, in the lab in my office uh, working on these projects. You one, know, thing that, this, sorry, uh, one thing that I've noticed is that most scientists, they have a hard time linking uh, their findings, their discoveries with the market, with the companies. That's, that's and and uh, you're an exception in this uh, world, in this science world, in the academy world. You're very successful as an entrepreneur too, yes? You've even been chosen as CEO of the year uh, uh, in the, the environmental category yes environmental ceo of the year yes. by the exactly. ceo monthly 2017 magazine, 2017 what is the secret of keeping like the academic research the scientific research in a very high profile and also being high profiled in uh the entrepreneurship as a business well business. it's normal it's normal i mean it's nothing wrong to being a fully basic science uh, scientist dealing mm -hmm. all the with fundamental uh, and, uh, but, uh, you know, having both, it's not uh, routine. It's not, uh, it's not something usual. Mm -hmm. And we are ex essentially as a company directly at that position. So mm -hmm. uh, we apply everything. We deal with fundamental science. We help to develop fundamental science, but our mindset is always at the application. Mm -hmm. It's a question of mindset. And, um, in terms of um, um, linking together uh, the science, the application, and entrepreneurship, uh, that uh, came natural uh, now from, from this point of view, from the point of view of today. If I, mm -hmm. I, if I look back, I do not see some special arrangement I did. It's just a 
just my mindset. I, I, you have to, to link the science with its application, but also you have to manage this. Without management, you uh, cannot do, uh, you know, you cannot go ahead. That's why I came to a different story, but that's why I came to my mind to create a new sustainability framework mm -hmm. where science, uh, that, it's a table with basically with three pillars. Mm -hmm. One is science and technology, one is management and government, and one is uh, education and uh, civil society. So mm -hmm. it's basically, it, everything goes around with these two, uh, three, um, I mean, this concept, this framework of sustainability with three pillars. Well, and we cover them both. We cover science and technology, uh, gov I mean, management, governance, we don't do it because it's on a political level, but also education. So basically, we are the synthesis of this concept. This concept reflects us. I see. You know, uh, it's a, the, there's a German, uh, uh, German artist, statement, scientist. Basically, he had all in 18th century. is uh, Johann Wolfgang uh, von uh, Goethe. Mm -hmm. uh, he had an expression. You know, speaking is a necessity, but listening is an art. Right. So this is at that listening is our strong point. We listen mm -hmm. to the industry. We listen to the academia. We link together both of those. Mm -hmm. But this is a 19th century, 18th century, uh, you know, saying it's not enough today. You have to, you have to hear, you have to, which is an art. You have to speak, but you have to apply. And on top of that, you have to apply sustainably. Yes. So if I develop further, this mm. uh, von Goethe expression is we can, we, can, we can say that you have to hear as an art. You have to speak as a necessity. You have to apply in a sustainable way. So Very this good. part, the second part, is my my addition to his saying. Yeah, one thing that I find interesting, quite interesting, as a matter of fact, is that you have this natural talent of uh, science. You 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 deal along very well in the academia. You're very respected in the academia, but at the same time, as I said, as an entrepreneur, you've met many outstanding CEOs in the world. Yes. Like uh, I've seen a picture of yours with Richard Branson and other other great guys that uh, that go along in covers of the most important magazines in the world. But you don't forget this link, the need to have this link. Um, you are the you promote, organize, and you're the curator of SIPS, Sustainable Industrial Processing Summit and Exhibition, an international event that started in the beginning of the century. Yes. 2003. 2003, yes. And uh, that by the end of the year is going to be taking place in, in Phuket Island, in Thailand. And every year you go to a different place. And I had the opportunity of meeting you in Rio de Janeiro. Yes, and I've noticed the venues, Cancun, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Paphos in Cyprus, uh, uh, Phuket Island now in Thailand. I mean, all these places are like beautiful places. Yes, they are usually very close to the beach. Is that a way of getting the scientists out of the laboratory? Because most scientists are like, stuck they are addicted to labs well uh in 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 a, in a certain point of view yes but mm -hmm. this goes back to our idea where, where actually it goes to sustainability the, the, and linking together the basic science with application with managing government mm -hmm. and yes. education so uh -huh. basically everything is synthesized in our concept of uh, sustainability framework yes you know um Basically, scientists are known as a profession. So scientists, engineers, and academics uh, are not technologists. Are known as as a profession that as um, they do not uh, they do not enjoy life. Mm -hmm. They they only work. They are horses uh, working always on the field, mm -hmm. and they have a concept that uh, uh, that uh, 
just work and then not so much uh, enjoying life where they are serving so much. Mm-hmm. The society exists because of scientists, engineers, and technologists. Yes. And they do not respect themselves in that way. Mm-hmm. So many of the conferences are, um, uh, are held in industrial areas, in, in uh, you know, when they are not interesting places. This mm-hmm. has been our concept from the start. The best places in the world should belong to scientists, engineers, and technologists because they serve to the world, mm-hmm. they develop the world. And this is also as an incentive for the young generation. Today, okay. number of um, engineers, scientists, uh, uh, even in medicine, uh, uh, numbers are going down because this is, this is a perception from the society. The society mm-hmm. perceives these professions like... Uh, work work no results of the work you Mm -hmm. don't see the you are not respected so much by the society compared to other professions like being an artist being a musician being Mm -hmm. a singer etc etc and then they they have no incentive coming Mm -hmm. to science and technology because we see all these other professions going in five-star hotels enjoying life etc etc scientists do not see that Mm -hmm. and this is an this is a concept within the mind of scientists also. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they say, oh, this is a very beautiful place. As a scientist, for us, it's good to have a three-star hotel somewhere. Uh, uh, they, it exists in, mm-hmm. uh, in, among the scientists. Mm-hmm. We are trying to change this concept. And that's why we choose the best places in the world. Right. And the idea of creating SIPs, it just goes back mm-hmm. to this hearing the, the, the Goethe expression, hearing is an art, SIPS c- brings together all fields of science, managing, managing government, etc., to hear each other. Mm-hmm. So it makes an art of hearing. Mm-hmm. And then speak, they speak to each other, they make presentations. But at the end of the day, we find the solutions, application, and how? In a sustainable way. And it's a very interesting it goes thing. goes around that- to this. Yeah, and a very interesting thing I, I find about SIPs, and I like the format very much, yes, uh, is that it's not only theory. It's not only gathering a number of scientists. In Rio de Janeiro, if I'm not mistaken, about something around 700 scientists, yes. But it's not only Pres- presentations. That, presentations, yes. Not only uh, 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 for scientists, but you gather together uh, interpreters that will listen to the scientists, to the solutions, and they will probably invest in that. And governments that will help apply. So it's that thing you say, the, 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 the three-legged table. Yes, science, exactly. business, and how fundamental is this for the success of SIPs? Well, it has been very successful and uh, the, the bar from one sips to the other has gone mm-hmm. up and up and up. Mm-hmm. From impressions of many scientists, entrepreneurs, uh, business people and mm-hmm. uh, engineers has been, it's been it's becoming better and better every year. Number mm-hmm. of the Nobel Prize winners coming uh, has been multiplied. Uh, so uh, this year we have nine Nobel laureates. Uh, which is very important. To have. That is a world record, isn't it? Nine yes, Nobel laureates world, in, a, in yes, an exhibition. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh-huh. That's a world record. Uh-huh. Why they are so important? Because they have a history behind them, mm-hmm. and most of the time, uh, um, uh, the uh, you know the Nobel Prize winners have been denigrated in the beginning. Nobody mm-hmm. believed them in their discovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are different kind of stories. The the uh, the size of their denigration has been different from one to the other. But uh, so they were able to overpass the skepticism mm-hmm. and the criticism uh, from their colleagues, from their associations. Mm-hmm. And they, they uh, because their discovery was how uh, society acknowledged their discovery, mm-hmm. because of the application. If would have stayed only in theory, yes, uh, the chances of getting a Nobel Prize would have been almost zero. I see. But 
most of them has been applied from other scientists and other engineers and this became so big and this overpassed all these previous criticism and skepticism because and this it was is, proven it was this proven is in the reality yes this is interesting now that you mentioned this that uh i had the chance of meeting uh i had some interviews in in sips rio de janeiro i had the the pleasure of meeting professor sir andre gain yes yeah. russian uh who is uh naturalized uh british yes he teaches at british the, russian and uh and yeah. dutch and dutch if i'm not yeah, mistaken dutch dutch and, dutch, and yes. his uh uh He teaches at the, the University of Manchester if I'm not yes, mistaken in, in yes. UK yes and uh, at the age of 28 he made he levitated a frog and people made said that was ridiculous what was the purpose of levitating a frog and he won a ignoble prize called ignoble prize exactly <laughs> 10 years later that same discovery that made a frog levitated was used and super high speed trains with his technology and he won the nobel prize because of that well not exactly he didn't get the nobel prize because of that but that has been used he got the nobel prize for oh, because uh, of for, the graphene uh, graphene 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 that's graphene. it sorry yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but but, but that, that application both have been was applied. Yeah, exactly both have been uh, both have been applied but also you know this this shows at uh -huh. the time he was you know he was uh, he got an ignoble prize i mean yes. i mean for a, for a discovery that nobody liked uh huh and nobody supported mm -hmm. but he continued with uh, with uh, his work and he continues non stop now by the way it's yes. exceptional uh, and he discovered graphene and graphene in the beginning was not such a it was a pure mm -hmm. academic discovery and now it's used even in shoes right Even yeah, in, in, it was a pure competition shoes, and, yes. And it was discovered by accident, accident. By accident, in a different. And by accident, I didn't know working, that. Working in a different project. Mhm. Mm and then this scientific discovery got an explosion in various different applications mm -hmm. in yes. several years. In a 10 years you can have application has been a, a, a huge number of of mm -hmm. applications. So when you have this application then you this discovery is already proven and whatever they the critics at that time they they they, they die uh, nature yeah so this that. application is important to to make it that's why we sips and our our tech, uh, I mean our company but also sips has this goal in mind application application yeah. proves all the theory whatever you can speak and speak and speak and speak still there's a chance nobody believes application application, application is the secret can, can get you a noble or noble uh, award noble prize but that's why we invited because to finish my where i started that's why we invite nobel laureate mm -hmm. for this reason to know about their discovery it's one purpose second mm -hmm. is to know the history of this overpassing the critics overpassing mm -hmm. the skepticism yes. and having courage in, in their discoveries mm -hmm. this is a huge example uh, the, uh, the best you cannot find better example for young generation to come mm -hmm. to science and to be to 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 develop and to discover new things mm -hmm. and at the same time uh this uh, double prize winners and uh, they need also to get in touch with uh, engineers and technologists which they normally they do not get in touch with As and the last meeting in Cyprus uh I I, I asked them this idea I'm going to bring to you to meet with engineers they liked it very much actually right. they were asking me where are the engineers they didn't came uh, they didn't come in, in in big numbers I told them because they are still in technical session but there were a good number came so the mm -hmm. Nobel prize winners were interested to meet with engineer technologists and and entrepreneurs so it is a it is a win win situation and it's it's it, the the magic stands there i see i see uh sips rio was such a huge success that you were nominated and then you later received the title of honorary citizen of rio de janeiro yes uh how important is this recognition from uh the city of rio from for organizing and bringing uh 
seven Nobel Prizes to the marvelous city? Well, this was, uh, in Rio, we raised the bar. Mm -hmm. So as I said, in, we have all raised the bar continuously. And uh, the SIPs in Rio has been one of the best uh, ever SIPs we ever organized. Mm -hmm. Something magical in Rio. That's why they say, Setaji Maravillosa. So yes. in Maravillous City. It's something yes. attractive. And I've been... Uh, and now I've you're been, a karaoke. I'm a karaoke, sure. You're, you're a karaoke. And uh, actually, in spirit, I've been in karaoke since I visited Rio uh -huh. uh, about 50, uh, uh, 10, 10 years ago. Uh, yes. it has been, I have been attached with Rio since that time, mm -hmm. since my first visit. You're even a but, big football fan, aren't you? You have yes, a, a local yes, club yes, here I, in I the I follow a, a lot. I'm a fan of Brazilian football uh -huh. and also the the, uh, the uh, American club of Rio. Yes, so that yes. I'm a I'm a big fan of that club. Oh, so, interesting, uh, interesting. But it is just one one of the but, but Rio in 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 all point of view, uh, basically, if I concentrated, uh, mm -hmm. I can say that I've been in love with Rio since my first visit. Interesting. So getting getting the honorary citizen from Rio de Janeiro is really a formalization of uh -huh. me being a carioca. Good. Because I felt carioca before. Good. Seriously. So and then then getting officially this title uh, makes me really proud. It's a great responsibility. Yes, so well, sure. Because yeah. uh, uh, they told me during the ceremony I, I am now uh, ambassador of Rio de Janeiro, which Great. I already have started to do it since that time. Good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the present, uh, the present days. The last year has been really tough for the world. A little more than a year ago, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Yes. And the numbers are of contamination and deaths are getting higher and higher. And we've just had uh, a vaccine. As a matter of fact, there, uh, uh, half a dozen vaccines uh, have been developed. Yes, yeah, some have uh, been operational already, yes. And I had the opportunity of reading your article that was written exactly a, a year ago. Yes. In March, in March 15, late first March. First direction was March 15, but it was, it was written in the fall in the formal format, March uh -huh. 25th. Yeah, so 2020. This this, this uh, program is going to be aired on the 24th, so a year. Yes, and exactly. uh, the the name of the article was COVID 19 Global Failure and Remedy. Right. Basically, in four days, it makes one year. Article. Yeah. But global failure and remedy. Exactly. What could you... I was reading this article again for the interview. Yes. And I've noticed one thing. Do you, you have a crystal ball? Because, I mean, you got almost everything right. Where, <laughs> which mistakes did we make and we're still making so far? And how can we get used to this new reality? Uh, how can I say that? The basically it goes to uh, this what I mentioned before this sustainability concept. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, um, you know this is the, this actually is the key of the of uh, all my mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned there there are three big failures of 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 health systems mm -hmm. in the world global failure. First, because they didn't listen to the science, because there were prediction about this new SARS virus. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was considered in many articles as a time bomb. Mm -hmm. Nobody paid How attention. How long ago? Well, I think it was 2006 or 2007. Wow. So 15 years yes. ago. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. And then, so the first SARS happened in 2003, 2002, mm -hmm. 2003. But it was uh, contained, etc. So that was our first experience. Mm -hmm. There was no vaccine developed. And um, it was contained with uh, classical means, no vaccine developed. Uh, they ignored it because it disappeared. It disappeared. Mm -hmm. Scientists are not supposed to do that. If something 
disappears. It didn't disappear because of science. It disappeared because of the managing and uh, is isolating people in China. And it didn't, didn't have a worldwide spread. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it was contained, no, nobody thought about that anymore. And there were many articles, the one saying ex uh, exactly that a, a new SARS virus is a time bomb. It will come soon. Nobody from the health systems in several countries paid attention to that. Mm -hmm. So the articles were there. So ignoring the science was the first global was first global uh, global failure, failure mm -hmm. from the health systems. Is their duty to read these articles? Okay. Is their duty to go to the government to say we need money for this? We have to prevent this. Mm -hmm. The difference between health system, health the public health system and normal medicine public health system has to predict when there are already the symptoms in at the, uh, at the society we, we, we see what happened it's too late so they didn't do that mm -hmm. so this was the second uh, big failure mm -hmm. that all public health officials and systems around the world did not predict and did not act in a predictive way mm -hmm. they followed they are always too late. Mm -hmm. But the virus this time was much wiser than before. They had the two weeks incubation time. <laughs> when you see the first sign, it was already too late. Mm -hmm. And the health officials always reacted and reacted too late and made things worse than, than they should. They should have acted in a predict predictive way. They didn't. Mm -hmm. And then the third one of the global Failure is that when you do not predict, when you don't act predictively, then preventively, then you follow the sickness. You are always two weeks behind the, the virus. And then what you do, you are alarming the society. And the only way to, to deal with this, you have to close everything. So you have to close the entire society. You have to close the uh, businesses. You have to close everything, which actually trying to fix this issue, you are, you are creating two big other issues, economic crisis and social crisis. Basically, you try to fix this issue and you create twice, two other things. This is not sustainable approach, by the way. Mm -hmm. Sustainability has you have to fulfill all the criteria, mm -hmm. meaning that you have to, to fix something but to take care of other, all other connective issues. If mm -hmm. you fix something, but you create two other crises, that's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. You have to deal at the same time. With, we have to fix something. The same thing is in the industry. Same thing is in society. Mm -hmm. To be sustainable, what is sustainability? You have to protect the environment, but at the same time, you have to develop the economy, and at the same time, you have to develop the society. Mm -hmm. You don't do it at the same time. You're not sustainable. And if you do not interact, if science and technology doesn't interact with the management and the education, any of those legs, the table falls. Everything destroys. What do yeah. we did in what did we did in, in COVID? We took care only to close everything. Doesn't matter that we create an economic crisis, doesn't matter we have a social crisis. Social crisis, I mean, people started, to, uh, you know, many. Many sickness and many, uh, uh, you know, this all are described in the article, but now yeah. I'm mostly uh, uh, interpreting in the view viewpoint of sustainability. Yeah. But you've, so, you've predicted some things, yes, in the article, like uh, you predicted the rates of suicides, for example. Yes. Yes, and this happened. There was an increase. At that time, that time yes. there were no real suicide. It was in uh -huh. March. It was just starting. Yes. I predicted the suicide. I predicted uh -huh. the economic crisis. I uh -huh. predicted, uh, I guess, overall, all the prediction in that article, uh -huh. and that article is so actual today. Yes. It's like written yes. today. It Actually, is. many it's people incredible. are speaking about this now. Uh -huh. But these are speaking one year later. If you see TV emissions and news, etc., etc., everybody is speaking for economic crisis. Everybody is speaking for, sui for suicides. Everybody, everybody is speaking with uh, people that have, um, um, normal illness and sickness, they have to go to the hospital, they cannot go. Mm -hmm. So the, the, there is a the death from from the virus is just one. But there are many other deaths because of suicide, because of not following 
uh, you know, chronic diseases as true as normal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have triple the crisis instead of by fixing one. We have triple the crisis because the approach was not sustainable, and the, the um, public health officials uh -huh. have a great responsibility. They have been contradictory. They they've changed the position several times, and they do not say sorry that we were wrong. They not never accept it. They they try to pass it under the uh -huh. rack because people they think that people uh, you know have a short memory. Uh -huh. No, everything is predicted in my article. Uh -huh. So if you are you know you're saying if I was against the mask in the beginning, today I am saying. Here, the same person that were against the mask in the beginning, in TV's interviews, in, in, in a public domain, they are uh -huh. saying we should keep two or three masks yeah. one year later. Mm -hmm. I mean, so uh, this is uh, something that has to be, this is not, although they are saying that's how science works, because mm -hmm. there are different studies and you can change the position. Mm -hmm. In a certain point of view, it's true. But it, it didn't happen like this. When mm -hmm. the position was changed against the mask to the mask, there was no there was no study. Mm -hmm. Was only an interview from the head of the health public health of officials in China. Yes. When they asked him Science Magazine, when they asked him what we with the West do wrong, he said the only thing you do wrong don't take masks. And then from that moment everything changes. But there was no there were no study mm -hmm. to change the position. So this has been. Rush this way, rush this way, change this way has been, you know, really, you know, it's not a proud moment for health, public health officials. Let me ask you a question and, about, specifically yeah. about this. Uh, because of this, we can say it's the, the largest uh, health, uh, public health crisis in 100 years, right? And... The, the, the largest sanitary crisis in 100 years. Uh, you've been talking a lot. We've talked a lot uh, for the past uh, year about this. About Rio SciTech. Yes. You already, uh, through Flogen Star Outreach, this non-for-profit organization based in Montreal. Yes. You already organized the largest uh, sustainability summit in the world, SIPS. Now you have a second uh, summit, a second conference. What is the difference between Rio SciTech and SIPS? Well, SIPS um, uh, is, um, is, um, uh, is, is deep. It, it, it is a scientific summit with its mm -hmm. application and uh, deep rooted in science. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, as an average about 12, 15 separate, uh, you know, a parallel session where science is, is dealt in, in, in depth, a real scientific symposium. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to keep in mind this uh, deep science symposium, how they serve the application the sustainable application. Okay. And then the, 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 the summit plenary lectures, each of the plenary speakers makes a resume of their field, how this mm -hmm. applies yes. to the society and how this applies to sustainability. Okay. Uh, this particular part of SIPS, we want to do, to make it a little bit wider. Okay. So um, this is this was the uh, complement uh, a complement event we wanted to have in order to stress the application of science and technology into the society into humanity. I see. So they are complementary to each other, and they they uh, they create a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Rio SciTech is more. Um, concentrated in the application, in the uh, science and technology in direct application to the society, in all fields of the society. Mm -hmm. the, the, the SIPs started as mostly in scientific and industrial areas. Now it's okay. much more than that. 
is more is it includes medicine, includes uh, technologies in medicine. But Cyriocytec will be concentrated exactly on this particular area on the Science new reality post COVID, exactly, on the new reality, post COVID reality, uh -huh. and how science and technology help the society That's in it. this new world. The world after COVID will not never be the same as before, mm -hmm. and this is the purpose of of Cyriocytec. So late March 2022 in Rio de Janeiro, we are having Rio Cytec Global uh, Conference for Humanity. That's that's why the name Global Conference for Humanity, the science and, and technology for humanity. I see. And applied in every field of humanity. I so, see. I, I, you name it, technology is everywhere, and we are not leaving any of the fields behind. Mm -hmm. This is the link. Good, good. And uh, can we expect Nobel Prizes in this event? Sure, sure. Yes. They are, are we going to have a world are, record? Said, because the world record is going to be broken in Thailand. Are we going hopefully. to break it? We, we, yes, sure. We, yeah. we are always breaking the record. So that's, uh, if we follow the history, it should, should be like that. So uh, Rio Cytec will mm -hmm. be a spring in spring. And mm -hmm. SIPs will continue as always uh, in late uh, late fall, beginning of the winter. Because as uh -huh. you know, we do it uh, we did we do it where um, where it's always uh, summer, summer. So in December, well, in Rio de Janeiro, it's summer. Yeah, I, I say fall, but it's actually yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> summer. All we are yeah. we usually say Rio de Janeiro in the northern in the northern hemisphere summer. Yeah. In the uh, South uh, Hemisphere, yeah. but we usually say here in Rio de Janeiro that so bringing, uh, bringing, bringing the whole world together in terms of seasons also. <laughs> yeah, in Rio we usually say that we get very sad when summer is on a Sunday, when winter is on a Sunday because we cannot go to the beach. Right now we cannot go to the beach much because of <laughs> because of COVID. The beaches are oh, closed man. today. Yes, yeah, yeah. in. Uh, not accessible. And uh, one of the things I hope that is very widely debated in Rio SciTech is solutions like lockdown or no yes. lockdown. This, yes, what, because we cannot exactly. leave this, like this forever. This are, mm -hmm. These are the issue that will be openly debated. Mm -hmm. Where there is debate, open debate, uh -huh. there is solution and uh, there are solutions and sustainable solutions well one thing Even everybody agrees debate. we have to hear silence uh science right we have to hear silence mm -hmm. yes but the issue is this that uh, that's 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 one of the purpose of real side text to mm -hmm. real to really hear science because there, the following science has been become today uh, uh you know more more like a like, uh, how can I say, like a facade mm -hmm. than the real meaning. So you can hear many people saying, let's follow facts. Let's follow science. The moment they say that, whatever follows from their mouth mm -hmm. is nothing that follows science or follows facts. And then the end, well, I follow science, I follow facts. In between, they followed nothing. I see. So, real science debated will be in real science. Dr. Open. Florin, I and would this like avoids misinterpretation. This is, sorry, uh, this is a very important point. Uh -huh. If you openly debate ideas without censor, without any um, limitations, mm -hmm. then you avoid, you avoid uh, conspiracy theories. They die. You avoid disinformation. They die by themselves. Yes. You avoid anything that is a, it, it's really a problem today. Mm -hmm. Because what, what today we are doing, we are ignoring. No, bring them in the open. Mm -hmm. When there is no truth, they die. When there is a debate, people can judge by themselves. And this is the best way to fight misinformation, to fight a conspiracy theory, to fight disinformation, to fight Fake news, anything. everything, yeah. Everything. This is the, this is the best way to do it. Uh -huh. Now, Dr. Flor, I would like to thank you very much for this talk today, and I want to invite you for publicly because we've been talking about this for a long time. But I would like to have you on a regular basis, like making a commentary uh, about 
everything that is going on in the world, especially about COVID, about the pandemic, because I think yeah, this sure, has to no be problem. really debated. And once in a while, we might have some uh, other guests to have a debate with you, but it's going to be very, very interesting. Yes, I would like to sure, thank no you problem. very much for this uh, talk today, for this interview. It's always a great pleasure talking to you and uh, I'll leave you for the final considerations. Well, it's a very nice and a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, you know, uh, somehow I did a resume of what we're doing mm -hmm. and I didn't think this way. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you asked me for interview, they make me make a resume myself. Because sometimes things are, the ideas are in your mind, but you do not, you do not say them and you, know, you do not uh, speak about them. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that is an opportunity for me also to, uh, you know, to, to, to make an overview of what we are doing. And we mm -hmm. see that we are in a strong path forward. We will be even more successful than, than we have been. So raising the bar uh, as always. And now we'll have the complimentary of SIPS that has been so successful. We have a, an event in, in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, of um, in the beginning of, um, you know, the, of the spring. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty good, uh, you know, uh, way of uh, doing things. And I'm open for uh, for specific uh, for specific uh, events, etc. Like our suggestion. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Uh... Dr. Florian, directly from Montreal. And I'm Mario Vignares from Rio de Janeiro. I'm glad to have you here. And see you next time. Thank you, Mario. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Okay.